Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today is all about how to reset for the last quarter of the year. I have 10 tips for you on how to make sure that you end the year on a high note and you enter 2022 the best way you can. Without further ado, let's get started. The first tip I have for you is for you to take out your vision board or whatever you did to write down your goals and review them, see where you stand. It's always good to see what you've written down and to see how much you've accomplished. This is the perfect time to see if the goals you wrote down at the start of 2021 still resonate with you. Don't be afraid to cross it off your list as in saying this no longer fits right for me. So a lot of times we write things at the beginning of the year because we're inspired. We have all the feels that come with the beginning of a new year. But you know, 10 months later, we realize why was I thinking? I, I don't even want that anymore. And it's okay to cross it off. It's okay to say I no longer desire the same things I wanted in January. So that's my very first tip is to not only review your goals, but to not be afraid to cross things off the list that no longer resonate with you. Tip number two is to create a plan that supports how you want to feel from now on. If there are goals that you haven't reached yet, maybe it's because you're not sure on how these goals are going to make you feel. Get super clear on how you want to feel and chances are that you will accomplish the goals you haven't yet. Tip number three to make sure that you end the year on a high note is that you schedule in time to do the things you want to do and not to leave it to chance. We often want to do a lot of fun things for ourselves and they almost end up on this imaginary or fictional wish list of I wish I could do this and I wish I could do that and they could just be simple things as in I just want a chill day at home from morning to night not doing a thing. Well, if what it takes for you to do that is to schedule it in, then schedule it in. Put it in your journal, put it in your planner, put it in your calendar. Schedule in time to do what you want to do. Get in the habit of doing that. And that way, when 22, 2022 rolls around, you are already in the habit of scheduling time for yourself, scheduling time for the things that you want to do, and you're not just leaving it to chance. Tip number four is to start a wellness journey now. Whatever it is, however it is that wellness looks to you, start it now. Don't wait till 2022. Don't wait till January to get your wellness going. Start that now. How good is it going to feel that you're doing this wellness journey 90 days in when January rolls around, you are already on a roll and you're going to have the best year yet because you started now. Think about what wellness means to you. Is it your mental? Is it your body? Is it your emotions? Whatever wellness means to you, tackle that. If you can't do all three at once, maybe it's your health. Maybe you want to start eating a certain way. Maybe you want to start working out. Or maybe you want to start meditating. Or maybe you want to start, you know, taking more self care days, whatever wellness looks like to you, start it now. Don't wait till 2022. Tip number five is to change at least one thing you've been wanting to change all year. If the wellness journey just seems like too much for you right now, if creating a plan seems overwhelming, then at least do yourself this one favor. Think about this one thing you've been wanting to change for a very long time and take action now. This is the time to do it. Don't wait till Monday, next Monday, next month. Don't wait till January. Make that change now. Tip number six is to start being good to yourself. I'm a big fan of affirmations as you guys know and I do engage in some negative self-talk. It's a habit of mine. I've been doing it for a very long time. So for me, the best way to get out of that, aside from meditating and listening to self-development stuff, is to use affirmations. So I encourage you to maybe try affirmations out or mantras out. If you struggle with not being good to yourself, 
I think it starts with the words I am. So as you know, I created cards called I am affirmation cards. And if you guys want to check them out, they're in the link below. But that's aside from my point. <laughs> my point here is for you to start being good to yourself. If you suffer from negative talk, as I suspect that most of us do, then this is a reminder for you to start being good to yourself. Speak kindly to yourself and see how this changes your life, how it changes your days. Tip number seven for ending 2021 in a high note is try slowing down. If you guys have watched any of my recent videos, you know that I am trying to slow down. I am trying simple living. I love it. I am dying to get out of the city that I'm living in and move to the country and get a farmhouse and start a homestead. I am just dying to just really take it to the next level and slow down. Whatever slow down means to you, if you don't know what simple living means in 2021, I encourage you to check out my video. I also wrote a blog about it because I really wanted everyone to understand that slow living and simple living in 2021 really does look different for each of us. What I may think of slow living may not look the same for you, but that's not a reason for you not to check it out. I encourage you to slow things down. We are moving at such a rapid pace. Everything is go, go, go. There are so many benefits to slowing down that I think it's the perfect way to end 2021 and start 2022. Tip number eight is to start a new hobby. You guys, I was never a hobby person. I've never really done any kind of hobbies. I never did after school activities. I never did anything. It was just, you know, nothing. I never did any hobbies. And I cannot tell you how happy hobbies are making me right now in my life. And I think we all need not one, but maybe five, six, 10, whatever, however many hobbies you can fit into your life, you should do it. Right now, my latest hobby is painting and I'm having so much fun with it. My next hobby that I am going to start embarking on is cooking and baking and I cannot wait because I don't know what it does. It does something to my brain. It just makes me feel like everything is not about getting something done or accomplishing something. A hobby is just for fun and I think we're all missing a lot of that in our lives. So I encourage you to start dabbling into different types of hobbies you know you may try one thing and it may not work for you you may feel it's boring but if you keep trying it trying different things you might stumble across something that just makes you so happy and that just sets your mind at ease and that it's not about work or trying to accomplish something tip number nine is to create a new routine as many of you guys know, I am temporarily living in Miami with my daughter. We are all in one house right now and that's about to change, but more on that in another video. But I have not been able to do my routine and I can't stand it. It drives me crazy and I cannot wait to get back to my routine. My routine is, you know, breakfast and then working out going for a walk, coming back home, cleaning up, then, you know, just getting to work. Even though it doesn't seem like a big deal, that is my routine. And I think we all need a routine. When we just float through our days, it makes us feel like we're really not getting anywhere or accomplishing the things that we wish we could accomplish or doing the things that we really want to do. So if you don't have a routine in place, I encourage you to start one now, whether it's a night routine, a morning routine, an afternoon routine, or a shower routine, whatever it is, something that anchors you, something that just says, this is me, this is what I do, this is the way I get things done. I don't know. I think there's a lot of benefits again into having a routine in your life. So I encourage you to start one now. And finally, tip number 10 is to forget the have to and live from what you want to. There's a theme, I guess, in this video, and it's all about slowing down, creating things that make you happy, 
tuning into how you want to feel, creating a wellness journey. It's all about you. When you serve you, when you live the way you want to live instead of how you think you have to live, not only do you live a happier life, but those around you benefit from your good mood, benefit from you living your best life. Well, you guys, those are my 10 tips on how to reset this last quarter and how to make sure that you enter 2022 the right way. If you have any tips for me, I would love to hear it in the comments below. If you have any questions for me, leave it in the comments below. And that is it for this video. Remember to subscribe on your way out and I will see you in a brand new video next week. Until then, stay safe.